Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope that you all had a great Thanksgiving, and I hope that you were reminded of everything you are grateful for. And I hope you ate lots of ham and pie. (laughs) Yes, I did say ham. Colleen and I actually prefer ham over turkey, so you can bet that that's what we had. And now that Thanksgiving is over, we can officially, officially begin our Advent Christmas season. So friends, welcome to our first Advent worship of our new series called, I Believe Even When. We know that our human history is fraught with so much pain and pain that leads to fear. We know that this, we know this to be true right now. So this Advent and Christmas, we are going to fill our worship services with lots of Christmas music, with lots of light, and we will affirm and act on the reasons why we can still believe even when we are discouraged. We will reflect on our themes of Advent and look for transformation through hope, love, joy, and peace. So let's dive in. Today, Advent 1 is a Sunday of hope. Both of our scripture texts for today come out of times when people really needed hope for a new day. In our Old Testament reading from Isaiah, Isaiah was writing to people who had been in exile after the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem. And chapter 40 begins the second part of Isaiah, which has a more comforting and hope-filled message than the first 39 chapters of the book. Isaiah 41 through 11 was joyful and hopeful because there was an unexpected reversal of these people's fortunes. The people in ancient Near East were allowed to return and live in their native lands as long as they remained loyal to the Persian government. And so this scripture starts with a very unexpected message. Comfort, comfort rings out in joy. They are coming out of exile and get to start a pilgrimage home. Comfort, comfort. This poem then turns to talk about God. 
The people have sinned, but God stayed true. The people are fragile, but God is powerful. This poem then talks about the human condition. In Isaiah 46 through 8, all people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. This is a reality. Our human condition that the ancient audience knew so well and that we know all too well today. Even through our brokenness, God is there. Verse 11 from our Isaiah scripture, God will feed God's flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in God's arms and carry them in God's bosom. Gently, and he will gently lead the mother sheep. Comfort. That's what this poem in Isaiah is about. And now we're going to skip to our New Testament reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. So Mark begins his gospel in verse 1, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning. Remember that. That will be important. And then Mark goes into, right away in verse 2, into this promise, this poem of comfort from our scripture in Isaiah. Mark's gospel of Jesus' ministry, the beginning of the good news, begins with our Old Testament scripture from Isaiah. It's the promise of Isaiah to the desperate Israel at one of their lowest points of history. Mark starts his gospel out in this way, quoting Isaiah because he is portraying to the readers that this promise from Isaiah of comfort, deliverance, and renewal is being carried out in Jesus' ministry. This promise is being carried out in Jesus' ministry, the beginning of the good news. Promises. Promises are not something that are inactive or static. Promises are typically something that you believe. They create an expectation about the future. They put things into motion. Let's think about promises for a second. You promise your spouse, your partner, that uh, you're gonna make dinner tonight. You most likely make that dinner. A friend promises you a ride home after the concert. Well, you don't make other arrangements because why should you? You have a promise of a ride. A dad promises their kids that they will play a game after dinner. That game board is unsurprisingly set on the table when the dishes are cleared. Promises create an expectation. And that future expectation sets something in motion right here and right now in the present. And that is the same truth about God's promises. David Lose from his blog called In the Meantime so beautifully says, and that perhaps is the key message of Advent, that in the stable at Bethlehem, God is not only keeping promises God made to Israel, but also making promises to us that in Jesus, God hears our cries of fear and concern and doubt at our lowest points and responds. And well, let's be honest. There has been a lot of low points for all of us this year. We have experienced this year differently, but there is no doubt that we have all had some of our lowest points in this year. And honestly, it might be pretty hard for some of you to believe or even hear that God keeps God's promises and that God responds to those promises through healing and peace and justice. Well, the Gospel of Mark has some things to say about this. Remember a few moments ago when I told you how Mark starts his Gospel in verse 1? The beginning of the good news. Mark labels all of Jesus' life, 
all of his ministry and even his death and resurrection as the beginning. And when someone calls something the beginning, there's more, most likely more to come, right? The story isn't over. From Isaiah and Mark, we hear the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That reminds us of our work that we need to do. The story isn't over because we are called to continue telling the story and being the story. We are called to prepare the way. This Christmas looks different. This Christmas is different. But our call hasn't changed, and God's promises haven't changed. But perhaps we are being called to change. Perhaps we are being called to hear our calling in a new way. Perhaps we are being called to be God's promises in the world in a new way. Perhaps this Advent is about us believing in those promises and being active participants in those promises in the here and now. Isaiah reminds us of God's promises and the beginning of the good news in Mark's gospel teaches us how to live as God's creation through the example that Jesus taught. We are reminded that Jesus was not only the fulfillment of promises, but the continuation or promises made anew because we still have work to do. Our Advent hope is that we are the continuation of God's promise in the world. When we are at our lowest, God is going to be there to pick us up. And when we have been lifted, that's when we pay it forward and help the next person that is at their lowest. That's how we are the continuation of God's promise in the world. We get to be a part of the contagious cycle of hope and love in our world. Life is full of low points and high points. God's promise is that God is with us through it all. And our call is that we journey with one another together through each other's low points and high points. And I believe that a major key to us fulfilling our call that God has placed on our lives is through relationships. This is something that you will hear me say over and over again. Relationships matter and are the most important part, the most important building blocks to building God's kingdom. So with that, I'm going to share with you a tough thing, a really low point for my family. This last Sunday, my family honored the one-year angel anniversary of my cousin-in-law's life. Last year, six days before Thanksgiving, my cousin-in-law committed suicide. Something that really shook my family and shocked all of us. And it really tore me to the core because I'm a pastor and I talk all the time about caring for your emotional and your mental health. And in fact, the month before he committed suicide, we had done a whole worship series on mental health and suicide was one of the topics. And I couldn't shake the feeling of what Bob must have been going through and wondering if there was more that I could have done. I prayed with my cousin and her daughter just hours after they found out about Bob's death. Undeniably the toughest prayer I have ever had to pray. And then a week later, I officiated Bob's ceremony of life. Undoubtedly the hardest funeral I have ever done. And then a year later, this last Sunday, I prayed again for and with my cousin and her daughter. But it was a little bit easier. And we cheered uh, Coors Originals to Bob's memory from our own home and sent each other pictures. And it made it a little more manageable. God was walking with me, walking with all of us during this terrible time in our lives. 
and God began to heal, and God continues to heal us. And so I tell you this story because relationships matter. For you and I to have a relationship as your pastor, you need to know me and know some of my lowest and highest points of my life, just as I need to know yours. Relationships matter to the calling that God has given us in our journeys. God will be with us through it all. And God being with us is most visibly and actively present through our relationships with one another. So for us to be the continuation of God's promises that are written through Isaiah and Jesus' beginning of the good news written through the Gospel of Mark, we got to show up for one another. And we need each other now more than ever. We need each other to remind one another of the hope that resides in the Christmas story. The hope that is the continuation of the story. The hope that God is with us and will continue to be with us, even as we wait to celebrate the birth of that hope realized. Amen.